Slumberland was a bit of a disappointment for most viewers. A film about loss, recovery and overcoming fear, that perhaps wasn't really as deep or as moving as it should have been. Sadly, this led to people avoiding the movie and missing out on seeing some pretty stunning visual effects and so, as is often the case with a film that doesn't do too well, the VFX didn't really receive the credit they deserve. Dean Egg, Framestore, Scanline VFX, Ghost VFX, Important Looking Pirates, Outpost VFX, Rodeo FX and Incessant Rain Studios all worked for over a year and a half and not only created a beautiful magical world but somehow managed to infuse it with the kind of hopes and fears that can only appear in a child's dreams. Creating a dream world that is both beautiful and yet threatening, comforting and yet daunting is no easy task. But perhaps a more complex task is getting the actors to seem like they are actually part of it. And here, the VFX teams had to get creative using wire work, partial models on gimbals, complicated harnesses, set pieces on green screen sound stages, A green screen board on wheels. A mechanical goosebuck. A massive blue screen water tank with wave machine. And a mechanical airplane bucket. Basically, anything and everything they could think of to make it feel like the actors were really inside this fantastical world. Some scenes like this one are just a joy to watch. The intricate choreography of actor positions, framing and camera movement is interwoven beautifully with the visual effects and really had us believing they were actually on a real set with real walls moving around. The Slumberland filmmakers went to great lengths to give each environment a strong visual identity. This was done not only to help distinguish one dream from another, but also as a kind of forewarning or intuitive guide to the emotions you were about to feel.
Slumberland isn't the perfect movie. Many reviewers found it dull, uninspiring and lacking imagination, but Slumberland is a movie designed for children and children don't write reviews. Slumberland is similar to Hook, Batman and Robin, Hocus Pocus and Casper. And oddly enough, all of them received really bad reviews, but today they still remain childhood classic. And so this begs the question, if, as children, we liked all these movies and now we don't, then are the movies really dull, uninspiring and lacking imagination? Or are we?